back on Connect FM 91.5, your evening roundup show with me, Yasmin Gandim. June is Pride Month. It's when the world's LGBTQ plus communities come together to celebrate. And we are speaking with Alex Senga. He is a social worker, documentary film producer and author. He's also the founder of Share Vancouver, which is a social, cultural and supportive nonprofit society for LGBTQ plus South Asians. He was the first Sikh to become a grand marshal of the Vancouver Pride Parade. He's received a medal from the Governor General of Canada for founding Share Vancouver. And he is going to be speaking to us about Pride Month and also what it means to belong to the LGBTQ plus community as a South Asian. Good evening, Alex. How are you? I'm great, Yasmin. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here. I, I'm really excited to speak to you about this. Um, this is an issue that I think is really important. And you founded Share Vancouver, a cultural and support group for LGBTQ plus South Asians. Why did you feel it was necessary to create this space specifically for South Asians? Were other organizations yeah. not supporting them? You know, even uh, uh, queer brown people, queer South Asians are marginalized within the mainstream uh, queer community. There's discrimination everywhere within all groups. I really didn't feel I could fit in, but, you know, at the time of creating this organization, there was a number of high-profile suicides. Uh, Some of the people, some of the kids were not even uh, gay, but they were bullied for being queer, faggot, homo, and they uh, killed themselves. And... I felt as a social worker and someone who was gay that I needed to do something to protect my community and to protect people like me and to create safe places. And in 2008, I remember when I founded the organization, one of the leaders of the Sikh temples in Surrey said, there's no such thing as gay Sikhs. And I had a huge backlash from so many people and from people around the world messaging me nasty. MSN at that time was the software people were using to send me chat messages, and I thought, what am I getting into? Is this, is this going to even go anywhere? And 12 years later, we are making significant strides. Um, we have people from the Sikh temple um, calling us and saying, we may not agree on everything, but we want to work together with the community to you know, deal with HIV and STD mm-hmm. and depression and suicidal ideation and uh, to keep our community safe, even... We've marched in the Vancouver Vasaki Parade now for, I think, three or four years in a row. And uh, we are we are becoming visible and we are supporting our community and we're getting support from our community in turn. That's amazing. And a, l- a lot of people uh, say there is a taboo w- uh, within the South Asian community when it comes to belonging to the LGBTQ plus community or rather even just discussing issues that pertain to the community, what would you say? Do you say that that continues to exist? And if it does, where do you think it stems from? You know, in in the culture, the religion, the Sikh culture does not discriminate against anyone. The Sikh, in the Sikh Guru Granth Sahib, they there's no mention of homosexuality. And in fact, it's a duty of all Sikhs to defend the marginalized, the oppressed, people who are vulnerable, people who are uh, discriminated against and alienated in our society. And uh, so the, from the religious perspective, if, as a Sikh, it's not a problem. But culturally, mm-hmm. homophobia and transphobia has always been there for centuries, and it's very difficult to change the traditions and cultures and ideas that are passed down from generation to generation. And we do live in a patriarchy, macho society, and, you know, anyone who is considered um, feminine or gay or who doesn't fit in, anyone who is different, as we know, as minorities, as as Sikhs and South Asians, anyone who is different will be discriminated against. Right. And, um, you know, for example, we are making a new documentary and the follow-up to our first successful film, and uh, it's called Emergence Out of the Shadows. We're looking at uh, gay and lesbian people coming out of the closet and the reactions of the parents. And when we were filming the parents, the parents still, after many, many years, have not, fully come to terms with their children being gay or lesbian. They were really struggling. They were Some people were crying. I don't know, I'm getting all these messages right now. <laughs> no um, problem. You know, they, were, they were crying, and I'm, they were crying, and they were struggling. And, you know, we even captured, you know, a father on camera crying that, you know, both his children were, both his children, one turned out gay and the daughter turned out lesbian. And so, you know, 
it's getting easier, it's getting better, but it, it's going to take some time because, mm-hmm. you know, when, when a child comes out to his parents and says, I am gay or I'm lesbian, a lot of the hopes and dreams that parents have for their children, such as getting married, having children, bringing home the daughter-in-law or the son-in-law or living together with the family or working in the family business or, or um, having grandkids or whatever, all this stuff is, kind of different. Everything is out the window, and you never know what's going to happen. Like, for myself, I have an adopted son, and you, you can find in my new movie, one of the lesbian couples, they have their own baby, biological baby, and they're now having a second baby. So just because you're a gay lesbian person doesn't mean you can't have a family, but right. you've got to find different ways to make that come about. Yeah, and you mentioned this about coming out in this documentary about kids coming out to their parents. And your mother, Jaspal Sangha, received a standing ovation for delivering a speech about embracing you, her son, as a gay man in 2018. What was your experience like coming out and being vocal about belonging to the LGBTQ community as a South Asian man? I'm so impressed that you know that. <laughs> You guys really do your research on Connect FM. So my mom did receive a standing ovation uh, in 2018 at the 10th anniversary uh, for Sure Vancouver. There was over 300 people in the audience. We even had the, the Adrian Dix uh, uh, and we had Rachna Singh who delivered official greetings on behalf of the Premier Horgan. Wow. We had Sue Dollywall in the audience. We had uh, Vera LeFranc who was a city councillor on behalf of the mayor there. We had organizations, so many people represented, and my mom went up there. She was, you know, kind of emotional, kind of teary-eyed a little bit, seeing how she struggled to accept her son, but how she proud of how proud she is now that I'm living, I'm true to my identity. I'm mm-hmm. living the life that I was meant to live, and how I've been created by God to live this life. Just like we were all God's children, and everyone said, "Wow, this is." It was it was such a powerful moment. Everyone stood up and, and clapped and. And, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a really, people begin to understand that we, we are just all children. We're just all human beings. We all belong to one family. We are all God's children. We just need to treat each other how we want to be treated. No one has a right to judge anyone. Yes, man, no one has a right to judge anyone. The only person that has the right to judge is God. And you know one thing I believe? I feel God doesn't even judge the worst sinner. Absolutely. I feel God has compassion for everyone. And uh, I think we need to treat people and, uh, you know, uh, bring out the goodness in everyone. I think everyone has the potential and capacity to love everyone. And I think we need to support that and nurture that. Yeah, absolutely. And for you, your mother was, she gave the speech and she was talking about accepting that. But what advice or guidance would you give to other South Asian parents who perhaps are not sure how to accept or embrace even their children coming out or belonging to the LGBTQ community? Yeah, so, you know, what I tell uh, gay kids all the time is, uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender kids is, it, t- it takes many years for a queer kid to accept themselves. Some of them are dealing with internalized homophobia where they don't like themselves for being queer. They, you know, it takes many years for them to accept themselves. So I tell them, give your parents some time. They cannot just start marching in the pride parade overnight. It's going to take them maybe many years for them to understand and fully grasp what is happening and to accept you as in terms of your, you know, your sexual orientation or gender identity. However, you know, The most important thing for the parents to do is say, you know, accept your children in the, don't reject your children. That's what I'm saying, because the one thing that gay children fear the most is being rejected by those that they are close to and those that they love. Right. And if they are rejected, then that does tremendous trauma and damage to that child. And they, and it may put them at risk of suicide. So by loving and not rejecting your children, you are actually saving their life. And you can work on dealing with the sexuality, uh, gender identity, uh, you know, understanding further down the road. But at least support your children when they come to you for help. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is so important. And it's it's difficult for for children, as you said, especially among their loved ones. They want that, that validation and that support. So it can be really difficult. But as you said, I think as parents... 
supporting your children and just being there for them is is the most important thing. And I also want to ask you in terms of Pride Month, we are in the pandemic right now and so it's is going to be a virtual celebration. So can you tell us what exactly is that going to entail and what can people expect? So Share Vancouver is going to uh, we we haven't done we have done some pride greetings for Surrey Pride, which is happening locally. Uh, we may have um, a screening of our first film, My Name Was January, with Vancouver Pride virtually. Mm-hmm. And we, Share Vancouver, might have a small little socially distanced gathering among our peer support groups so people can feel like they're not alone during this important time for, for, you know, for our cause. And uh, we have to be very careful, but Share Vancouver has peer support groups. We offer free counseling. We provide information, referral, support. We have, um, so we are here for our community if they need us, and we can pretty much do everything over phone or video or uh, provide support um, through virtual, virtual means. Okay, that's great. And is there anything else that you think is important for the South Asian community to really know and understand about Share Vancouver or about LGBTQ rights and ideas in general? Well, you know, I want people to know that Pride, actually, the Pride parades and the Pride movement started in in New York City at a bar called the Stonewall Inn, and it was started by black queer women Mm -hmm. who were riding against the police. The police were harassing them, bullying them, and they finally had enough, and they started a riot. And now we're seeing in the United States black people being killed, being murdered, being harassed. Yeah by the police. And I know your previous guest was talking about this. Share Vancouver issued a formal statement in support of uh, um, our uh, support of black people and against uh, police racism and brutality from the bad cops. I do not want to say that there are all bad cops, but there are so this was, you know, we are against what the bad cops are doing. Mm-hmm. We recommended that even police here locally in Surrey and in Vancouver can make some changes. We said we are not in support of police investigating public complaints by themselves. I know they are saying it's so-called independent, but I want something truly independent that is civilian oversight. You know, we've seen what happened in the United States during the impeachment hearings against Donald Trump. You had Republicans investigating Republicans, and the whole thing was a joke. And, you know, I also like to see... um, diversity in hiring. We should have, um, I mean, how many times have you seen chiefs of police that are actually women or people of color right? or indigenous people? We need to have people of color in, in leadership positions in the police and the police force should be representative of the local community that it represents. Absolutely. It wants to have public confidence. And the other thing I want to say, other want to say, and, and LGBTQ people have also been oppressed and discriminated against by the police. So we can relate to and understand what a lot of our black brothers and sisters are going through. And the other thing is, I think right at the recruitment stage, there should be proper aptitude testing to weed out the racist, the sexist, the homophobic, and the transphobic cops. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the RCMP settled a multi-multi-million dollar settlement with the female police officers who were being sexually harassed on the job. Can you imagine this is a police force and they're harassing their own female officers? Wow. So this just goes to show how much more work needs to be done in uh, the police forces here in Canada. And the other thing that we wanted to do was um, uh, we want to, I had one more recommendation, but you'll have to check. I, I think, I think Drishti magazine published it. So you might have to go online and find it. <laughs> okay. No problem. Well, I'm sure our listeners will definitely do that. Thank you so much, Alex, for joining us, for speaking with us about something that is really, really important and necessary uh, conversation to have within the South Asian community. I really appreciate it, Alex. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Yasmin. Take care. Bye.